This is the King's 17th visit to Australia, obviously the first as head of state. He's been undergoing cancer treatment. It's been a slimmed down schedule, we're told, for his tour of Australia before he goes on to that Chogham meeting, which will be held in Samoa. But he certainly packed a lot into today. He had this formal reception inside. It wasn't a sit-down lunch, rather. Uh, hundreds of dignitaries, including former Prime Minister Tony Abbott, uh, we saw there John Howard as well, alongside a whole series of other Australian identities in the room for the King's speech. He speaks so warmly and fondly of his time here in Australia. He clearly has such affection for this country. But as well, he's continuing his advocacy for the environment and, crucially, for climate change, making it clear he wants to see countries like Australia continue to do more. Life here has always entailed these extremities of survival and endurance. Yet in their magnitude and ferocity, as well as their frequency, they are new. The regular role of unprecedented events is an unmistakable sign of climate change, to which Australia is so particularly vulnerable. This is why Australia's international leadership on global initiatives to protect our climate and biodiversity is of such absolute and critical importance. Uh, it was echoing a sentiment we'd heard just minutes earlier from Prime Minister Albanese in his address, praising the King's role on the world stage in pushing for more to be done to reduce emissions. A separate uh, and different tone from opposition leader Peter Dutton in his address, praising the importance of uh, Britain's institutions in Australia's system of government. Your abiding duty to all that has been built on the foundations of tra tradition is balanced by a great responsibility to the future, both its serious challenges and its exciting possibilities. You have long apprehended the grave reality of climate change. You take seriously the threat that it represents as well as the necessity and crucially the capability of humanity to take meaningful and effective action against it. We should never take our British inheritance for granted. Australia has benefited from the stability of a democracy with the monarchy as our bedrock. Through times of peace and war, constitutional and parliamentary crises, good times and bad, Australians have known stability and have taken confidence knowing that there are better days ahead because our institutions are protected and underpinned by the independence and stoicism of the reigning monarch. We've also had Trudy, uh, sort of like an unusual circumstance, we'll just note there's a truck, I hope you're safe, just tell me, um, you know, blink twice if you need me to, to end and get out of the All way. All safe, but Tom. We have had this unusual situation. <laughs> this is Australian efficiency, they're packing up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the bollard, well, they don't need the bollard, so apparently they're, they're getting straight in the truck. Uh, this unusual situation where we have a, a senator, so Victorian Senator Lydia Thorpe, who has access to all these events because she's a federal MP, but security having to essentially escort her away twice today. Yeah, well, the first, uh, this happened off camera. We didn't see it immediately at the time, but Lydia Thorpe, the independent senator, former Green, was at the Australian War Memorial event. She tried to get close to uh, the King where they were greeting the public, and you can see from the images is that she's kind of uh, held at bay by a police officer there. It looked like she was trying to take off uh, a piece of clothing as well. Then here inside Parliament House, all MPs and senators had been invited to attend this official reception. Uh, Lydia Lydia thought waiting until the end of the King's speech there and she yelled out a number of things including this is not your country, you are not my King and then F the colony. Uh, have a look at how that played out. The King at the time didn't appear too phased just speaking off the side with Prime Minister Albanese. You'd expect that the King and Queen would have been briefed ahead of time about the potential to see that sort of uh, 
a lone protest, but one that was pr probably could have been predicted. I thought the King today, Tom, has gone out of his way to acknowledge Australia's Indigenous uh, history. Everywhere they've gone, they've received a welcome to country. He, at the Australian War Memorial, had visited uh, the dedicated memorial that's there for Australian soldiers who fought from a, in, a Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander backgrounds. He spoke about it in his speech as well, acknowledging Australia's Indigenous heritage. So an issue to be managed sensitively, but it seems like the King conscious mm. that that could have come up today. Yeah, uh, he's been conscious of it in Australia, around the world, with the history of the Commonwealth and some of the African nations in particular as well, uh, Pacific nations. So, yeah, mm. certainly something been on his radar, famously shot at, albeit with blanks, on an Australian trip. So he's seen it all. Trudy, thank you. So that's Trudy McIntosh out the front of Parliament House. We'll have more on that royal tour throughout the afternoon.